Ooh, my make head blow off. Hey yo, it's a talk show host, Kana Lassiter. Join me for an episode of Relations, the most lit lit hour of adult conversation. Hold up, hold up. You know you can't forget about me. It's 51 Spade, Alpha Male G O D. One half of Relations. You wanna hear the truth? Can, can, can you can you can you handle the truth? It's where it's at, baby. It's where it's at, baby. What's good? It's an all new episode of Relations. My name is Kana Lassiter. Say it with me now, Alpha Male G O D 51 Spade, aka the Ninja you Love to Hate. I'm in the building. You know how we do it? We give you two topics in one hour. First topic of the night is going to be um, Are too many sexual partners getting in the way of connection and love? And should you remain friends with your ex? Those are the two topics. Uh, we're going to start with, should you remain friends with your ex? Let's have this conversation. Um, I happen to have a conversation, a pre-conversation about it. And the man's perspective seems to be why. Um, and from a woman's perspective, if I had to think about why, um, I don't think women like to have anyone out there that they have a bad relationship with, whether it be a female or male, I think if there is a chance for a friendship to be there and be a benefit, especially for a woman, she's going to go for it. I mean, if the relationship ended amicably or something you're over or you forgiven, then what's the big guy? What's the big deal? I mean, I think I'd rather have one more friend than one more enemy. Does that make sense? I understand that. So, yeah, so I think, yeah, I think I mean, exes I, can remain friends. I don't think that's absolutely out of the question. Yeah, but the question is, should they? I mean, I think that's that's pretty much how it starts. And I'm just going to say uh, everything is, is situational. Like, I understand that whole scenario. Like, what's crazy is, is you get different uh, you get different scenarios, especially when it comes to men. So I'll say um, for myself, a lot of times I end up in... <laughs> Uh, in, like having this conversations because I'm never had I'm never scared to have that conversation but I always get these conversations when I'm in a relationship like you know you think we could be friends like afterwards and an easy fix is to just say the word yeah even though you know that that might not be necessarily true because what I think what women fail to realize is that when you move on to another person you know now you're dealing with another person and all the questions that come with happen with your ex. So now the expectations become a lot different because it's like, well, if that's your, if that's your ex, then why is she calling and checking on you? If that's your ex, why? And then it just becomes just too difficult in most relationships. So you just be like, you know what? I just rather not just be friends at all. You know what I'm saying? So you can sell that to someone, but it depends on, it, it depends on like who you in a relationship with, whether that's going to be valid or not. Should you remain friends? I mean, honestly, I've always been on the side of it's hard for male and females to be friends. I really just don't believe that that's a possible thing um, unless, it, you know, you can have scenarios where it's distance between y'all. You don't see the person all that much. That makes sense. If you're in the same city with them, it becomes a lot difficult because you might have a jealous you know, girlfriend or something going on. Like, you can't be like, you know, you could be like, hey, I'm finna go out with, you know what I'm saying? My homeboys, this and that. No big deal. You say, hey, I'm finna go out with my homegirl. It's a big deal. So, you're not gonna have the same thing. We don't even have the same standards when it comes to celebrities. If you saw a celebrity sitting next to a female and they're friends, everybody say what? They're dating. Yeah, there you go. And that's a prime example right there why that's difficult to say, you know, for a male and female to be friends. And most guys understand that. The reason it don't make sense to females is because females are users. They're always using men for something. They can have they man who they use to, let's say for instance, like I give different scenarios. You in a relationship with your, with your man. It's been a long, you know, this ain't new. This ain't y'all new wed phrase or you know what I'm saying, new in the beginning, but now y'all been together for a while. Y'all might not hang together as much as this and that. Now your ex is there, you know, in the place. You know, hey, you want to catch up on lunch? His agenda is pussy. 
But most females <laughs> don't recognize this shit. You know what I'm saying? They really be on some shit like, oh, he's married. Like, I be hearing all kind of shit. He's married. He ain't like that. That's the ex. Well, for me, it's over with. This nigga be stalking you on Facebook. Stalking you on Instagram. Y'all so fucking stupid. Y'all put shit up on how happy y'all are on, on, on social media. And then when someone try to infiltrate your, your relationship, you be looking with pie on your face. Pow. So... It's a, it, every situ situation is a, 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 a different, but it depends on who you with. I think that, a, I think it is admission. When you can't be friends with an ex, to me, it's admitting that there's unfinished business. It's admitting that there are unresolved feelings. To me, I look at someone who can't have a friendship as a red flag what are you so afraid of if you're friends are you afraid that you're going to slip up so are there things that are rocks that are unturned in that relationship are things unfinished in that relationship and why are you trying to build a fence between the two of you if they had so much to do with your life I mean, if there's, I think there's a double-edged sword there. If you're in a long-term relationship, your partner, who you have, you have chosen, have heard the good and the bad things about this friendship or relationship. Um, and in most cases, in a lot of cases, this person has been around for a long time and um, could have been around during lots of milestones um, in your relationship. I mean, lots of milestones in your life. Um, so graduations, babies. So it's kind of like, let's put it this way. Let's say you get married or not get married. Let's say your daughter has a wedding. Um, and at the time that was your girlfriend. Well, you can't cut her out of all the pictures. You She's, you cannot cut her out of the wedding photos. I mean, you can <laughs> physically do it because you could physically do anything you want to do unless you're bound. But what I'm saying is you most likely wouldn't take a whole wedding album and tear out the person that you're not with anymore. But you would do it if you fell out with him and he was angry at him. No, not necessarily. Come on now. Now, no. we, finna, now we finna play. No. Now we finna play. For me, no. I'm not, I have not never done that. I've had horrible breakups. I've gotcha, never gotcha. gone through my but you're telling me, but you telling, and ripped them up. Oh, gotcha. But you're telling me, you ain't never seen no woman who once the ex comes out of the play because it was a bad breakup, they don't start cutting them out of pictures. And I be looking at their ass like they psycho. Okay. It ain't that damn serious. Okay. To get a pair of but, scissors and cut portraits But that's up? for you. But that. But hold on, hold on. But that is for you. You know what I'm saying? Now, so I understand that you're speaking for you, but I'm just talking about generalization. That is shit that really go down because really sometimes that shit might not be resolved. You don't know how, you, you don't know how the breakup went or sometimes that person is that angry that they don't want to see them. So closure... For them can be closing that chapter, which means erasing everything away from that person. And I am a firm believer that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I believe, I believe, erase they ass all out. I get rid of pictures. I don't give a fuck what you say. I get rid of pictures. Them to be the first ones to go out my phone. All pictures are gone. Wow. You know what I'm saying? If you even think if you was an ex and you think I have still pictures of you, you are sadly mistaken. Them shits is all gone. They'll be gone off in my phone. You'll be gone off my Instagram. You'll be gone off Metaverse. You'll be hey. gone, period. You'll be th you think Thanos snapped his fingers. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and you've just disintegrated. Now I understand taking the pictures <laughs> off social. And I even think that's like crazy because I've I've had to go back just looking at pictures, just curious at where I was to where I am now. And I went back and you're scrolling forever. You're actually going back to your birthday from 2003 to look at that one picture that y'all took at Chart House. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to go through all that. I've only had, well, fuck that. I've had some bad breakups. Okay. But... I don't think there was ever a breakup where I was like, oh, this motherfucker. And I went to cutting up pictures and clothes. And I just don't, I don't think I have that amount. And I've, and I've been with an abuser. I don't think I have that amount of energy in me, of negative energy. Mm -hmm. I'm a, outwardly pretty much 
a hundred, not a hundred percent. I will say at least 96% of my days are positive as fuck. Mm -hmm. And that's because I don't think I can emotionally handle a lot of negative. Gotcha. I, I, I can't. Here's a little bit of insight. You know what I'm saying? That shit sound good that you're talking about, but I'm going to tell you why it's, it's possible. Not really sure. We'll dig a little bit just to see if this is a situation. But I'm almost positive that you probably had no pictures of with the man anyway. I'm almost willing to bet that you probably didn't have one single picture of you and him together. Like y'all was hugged up out somewhere, this and that. Because most abusers, it like I'm just now I'm just going from the standpoint you was like, well, I was with the abuser. Well, most abusers don't ever really take pictures. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they don't never really like to be at the family photo, all in the videos, yeah. all in the game shows. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they nearly don't be there. So for you to say, well, I, I I just don't see you probably didn't have him anyway. I didn't, up. but I was using it. <laughs> I was using it as an example, bad of, example. How, of how far I'm not going to go. But it's bad example. There's stuff that I still retained from the relationship that I didn't throw away. I got you. So it's the same thing. But no, it's not. It's different. It I'm, I'm, no, it's not. I'm gonna tell you why it's different. Retaining something physically in a in a relationship of something that someone has. That's not the same as a picture hanging up and you got to walk past it every day. That shit will infuriate people. That shit will make you mad and remind you what that person did to you. You're not going to want to see that shit no more. So you're going to pick that picture up and you're going to rip it the fuck apart. I don't, that's just, it's human nature. It's, I just don't see somebody. Like, you know what? He was fucking Belinda, but I'm just going to leave that shit on my coffee table. I just don't see nobody just I saying. Mean, I just thankfully, the conversation <laughs> isn't about whether you're going to tear up pictures or not. But I think we're using it as an overall example of the negativity that you will allow to fester and react to um, after a breakup. I mean, to me, I don't stay angry. I I'll tell you when I'm at my angriest. I'm at my angriest when I think about the time that I've sacrificed. And on top of that, I'm now lonely. Not only did I sacrifice my time, this this is the result of it. I'm by myself. Once I'm in a new relationship, things are going well for me. I'm so engulfed in that happy. There's no way I'm not even, if someone reached an olive branch, did an olive branch to me, an ex, and said, hey, man, I'm sorry for what I did to you. I, you know, can we go on as friends? I don't think I have it in my heart to be like, nigga. And hang up the phone or fuck you or if I don't think that's even it's the softer. I don't know if that's a good idea. That would be more me, but I think I would even have a difficult time saying that because the other person is coming to me positively. Mm -hmm. So I think the correct statement is if someone, even you know my that? ex comes to me positive, I have a problem reacting negative. But how do you know that? How do you know it's that positive? their intentions are because, positive? Yeah, because I'm not. I, I don't I, know. I, and that's my point. My point a lot of times is. I'm I'm a firm believer of misery love company. So a lot of times I feel like exes want to make sure you are just as miserable as them. Like they'll be like, well, I'm lonely. I ain't with nobody. I'm feeling down. Let me see if Kane are lonely and feeling down and this and that. And that makes them happy. You know what I'm saying? When they look on social media and they don't see you with nobody. Cool. She ain't with nobody. And then the main reason they want to be friends is because, and most people like with breakups, I noticed that this shit always happens. It's like, it's like a, a, a game of war or some shit. Waiting to see who do what. I'm not going to say anything. Let me see if this person reach out. I'm not going to say anything. Let me see if this person reach out. Then y'all reach out and then y'all still not honest. You know what I'm saying? What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? What you doing this weekend? Nothing. What you doing? Like You know what I'm saying? And to me, I feel like just to avoid that whole shit, you know, I feel like, you know, I don't feel it's an anger situation. I think it's better on. I bet, think it's a better situation of just closing a chapter. For me, it's not that I'm angry with the person. It's just that that season and that chapter is over. You know what I'm saying? So when when it becomes over, um, and don't get me wrong, it's been different scenarios for me where it shit ain't bad. It, it, it shit ain't been a situation. But what I'm saying is like, if it's a bad breakup for me. You know, because it's just like divorces. You know, divorces, you can divorce, uh, what is it, amicably? Amicably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But all divorces ain't like that, and all breakups ain't like that. Some are bad breakups, and to me, I just rather just move on. 
hey, I'm sorry this and that. Hey, you know, I get what happened. I accept your apology. I just don't want to see you no more. But you isn't it saying? an indication that if you're still mad and you're still angry about something, not that you're not over it? No, I'm not mad. That's and, and I don't just, I don't see how you come to the conclusion of being mad. Being I'm not being mad. It's just that. There's no reason for that negative energy to be in my life anymore because that person is still. But you just it, said it, something it, important. It's, it's what still, negative energy? It, it, that person's negative energy is it, because that person could be negative. Like you having a, your ex is an abuser. Why? Why do you want to be friends with an because abuser? Because an abuser isn't always an abuser. If I go, if I go to heaven right now, I wouldn't want God to say that to me. Gotcha. Like you don't belong here, girl, because gotcha. you stole some gum out the store. And I understand that. Who but am I? God, you are your person protecting yourself, and I think that's what's wrong with a lot of people now, especially particular women. Women often trying to figure out what, how the other person feel, never how they feel. Oh, I don't want to hurt this person's feel. I always hear this dumb shit right here. You know what I'm saying? Especially coming from women. Well, I don't really want to say that. I don't want to hurt that person's feelings. But when it's somebody else, this and that, you have no problem hurting that person's feelings. You know what I'm saying? But the person you was fucking and all this type of shit now becomes on this certain planto field where they're different. You know what I'm saying? Someone steal for you, you'll curse them out, cut them off. But someone you was in a relationship with, did you dirty? You like, well, you know, I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? I guess we can still be friends. That don't make any sense. You see what I'm saying? So I'm putting it in that because if you can, someone steal from you and you willing to cut them off, but you telling me someone you was fucking fucked you over and you like, well, you know, we can still be friends. Something is wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? You need to see some counseling. It's okay to protect yourself and leave that is be to protect your peace. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about it's negative energy coming from you. It could be negative energy coming from someone else. Mm -hmm. So if the other person is negative, there's nothing wrong with cutting that out your life. That's like um someone cutting um uh they cut the cancer out and then they give it to you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well that's why I wanted to make sure I pointed out that the person on the other end is looking for peace looking for, um, I think it's called reciprocity, looking for forgiveness. And I've, I've had people reach out to me and say, you know what? I was, I, that was fucked up. I'm sorry. Yeah. But was it a, was it an ex? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. an ex. You know, and I'm sorry. I did that to you. Mm -hmm. Um, and he made that phone call to me while I was in a relationship, but the relationship was almost ending. It's almost over. Um, but he did make the phone call and his relationship was about to end. No, my relationship okay. was on the outs. Okay. And he found me on social media and he was like, look, man, I want to tell you, I'm very, very sorry for what I did. This was, if you've guys been watching the show, I told a story about a guy that I was dating that actually got married. I ended up at his bachelor party on accident because mm -hmm. it was a public club. Gotcha. So this person called me years later mm -hmm. to say, I'm sorry that I did that to you. Mm -hmm. So at this point, even though I'm at the end of my relationship, I'm still in one. I'm doing well. I don't have any hate in my heart for this well, person. I'm not telling you have so, hate. So... My answer was sure. And then after that, he we start making money together. Um, he coaches ball. I start filming the events it, that he brought his wife to. Mm -hmm. It was innocent. Gotcha. But there was actually okay. was a it, friendship there. Was it really innocent? So he didn't flirt with you. He didn't He didn't make any Eventually sexual... No, 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 no. Stop. Eventually no, he did. Stop. Stop. Then it wasn't innocent. There was... The, and this is the but thing... But what if the flirting came a year or two later? I don't give a shit when it came. <laughs> Like, this is what's wrong with women right now. I don't give a fuck when it I came. I just wanted to see. That's right. And that was the point that I'm talking about right there. He made the friendship just to see, to make sure that you wasn't angry. Then he was like, you know what? I can't just try to get this pussy immediately, so I need some time to pass. <laughs> that way I make sure I build a rapport and I'm like looking like that good guy. Then you start like, well, this shit ain't all this bad. You know what I'm saying? Then it's like... Oh, you know, I met his wife, met his kids. Then it's going to be one night. It's like, you know, you can meet me at the spot. You know what I'm saying? You know, we could just have a couple of drinks. Next thing you know, a dick in your mouth. And you wake up talking about, I don't know how that happened. It happened because you decided to go on this long, drawn out friendship that shouldn't have been. I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> but I want you to be me in the, in the moment that. I can't be that. <laughs> no, but I'm trying to explain. When someone hurts you, especially for, for me, I'm not speaking for all women. I've been hurt. But for me, it's like we had a show and I said, 
I don't want revenge. I want regret. That meant a lot to a lot of people. A lot of people wrote back to me and said, oh my God, I understand exactly what you're saying. It's not like you're mad enough that you want to slit their tires or get revenge on them. You just want them to be sorry for fucking hurting you. So mm -hmm. it meant a whole lot to me to hear mm -hmm. him say. But he wasn't sorry. I am, how do you know that? Because he was trying to fuck you. But he wasn't <laughs> trying to fuck me in the same day he said sorry. Not even the same year. That's how it, that's how it works. For me. And, and, but and, you, and are is, you saying he truly isn't sorry? Come no, on now. No, he, he could He could really be sorry that no, he hurt me. Nope. If he was truly sorry, he wouldn't. Have, I'm, I'm gonna tell you why. And this, this is, and if, if you don't, this is crazy. and if you don't understand this, I'm gonna just tell you that. I'm gonna just tell you this. Okay, most people, most people, when they're sorry and regretful, they do not try to, to commit the same crime that they did. I'm serious. That, water, man. not the same crime. <laughs> For real. So when you, so when someone is in prison, you know they come in front of a board on amongst what happened and then they have to say why they're remorseful why they won't do this again yeah. have all, 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 all those things it's a parole board that's yeah. right so now he comes in front of you the parole board you know what i'm saying now most people you know what i'm saying hey i've been locked up before you say what you need to say to get past that type of shit and this is, has been a knock but this often happens when you leave in the prison what they say <laughs> Don't you'll be back. <laughs> he said, you'll be back. Because they know they said, like, this nigga is not remorseful for none of the shit that he's doing. So my thing is, how I know he was, how I know that he did not give a fuck is because he tried to commit the same crime that he did against you again. Family. Again. So if he was really sorry, he wouldn't, he wouldn't even have tried that with you. Men sometimes have problems there with their go. dicks. There I mean. We, oh, See, there we go. See what I'm they saying? They do. See what I'm this what man we, this is what, gonna try? This what this what world we live in. This this type of thinking right here. This is what world we live in. I just so think she it's normal. Him, she, she, she. I think it's normal oh. for a guy to try to see what he can get. I do not think him trying to fuck me has anything to do with him being remorseful or regretting hurting me. You don't know what he was going through on that particular day, and I don't know what he was going through a okay. year later when he tried to fuck. But I don't relate. The two. I, I really he, don't. I don't care what he was going through because realistically, I, I'm going to tell you this. And this is me, so I'm not saying this for everybody. My goal in life is never make the same mistake twice. That's my goal. So when I fuck up and someone acknowledges my fuck up, I try not to make the same mistake twice. I don't just say I'm sorry. I tell the other person, I get it, I understand, and I try not to make that mistake ever again. So now, if I'm want to build a friendship, a rapport, or anything with that person, my goal now to make sure that I don't fall in the same place that had us on the outs. Yeah. That is not remorse, regret, or anything else. It isn't. You know what I'm saying? That's just like letting a serial killer out. You know what I'm saying? Like one of my, I'm a anybody know me is I'm a big Tupac fan. One of the movies that he had was Gridlock, and in that movie. He said he could not let that killer back on the streets. We let him out. He going to kill again. And that fucking, his partner ignored that. And guess who killed him at the end? The person Pac told him, don't let out on the streets. He going to kill again. He's a killer, man. We let him out. He going to kill again. And I think some people don't understand that. People can say whatever. But who they are sometimes be buried inside. They try to fight. Just like any addict to this and that. I'm not saying you can't change. What I'm saying is those parts of them is in it. In their mind, they saying, damn, I, I want to. I want to. But they're like, I just can't. I just I just can't fight the feeling. You know what I'm saying? So to me, that's why I'm saying it's better. To me, it's better that you and that energy that you got be dismissed. I think sometimes you miss your blessing by being that way. And I get the whole protecting yourself thing. Well, that ain't no blessing. But to actually give someone peace that's searching for it and saying, you know what, I do forgive you, and yes, we can be friends. To me, you don't that's have to, a merit in your book. If you don't have to put person, on the cherry on top, though. You don't have to put the cherry on top. That's what I'm saying. You can give someone peace and say, I forgive them. I'm not saying. I'm not friend. saying that. I'm not saying that someone asks for forgiveness and I'm like, get the fuck out of here, bitch. That ain't what I'm talking about. I've had women come to me that fucked up, you know, damn, I fucked up, you know, I'm sorry, 51, like, 
you know, we was in a bad place. And that, and I say, you know, it's cool. I understand. I get it. Maybe I could have did shit better. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? But moving forward, we can't be friends. I forgive you. But moving forward, we can't be friends. You just can't. Do they they, they do don't need the cherry on top. Because if you're looking for real forgiveness, I gave it to you. That's what I'm saying. I'm just addressing the point you made. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for the forgiveness, I gave it to you. Mm -hmm. But that is not part of friendship. Friendship spinship. You don't need <laughs> that part. You just need my forgiveness. I gave it to you. I get what you're saying. I, I totally get it and I don't disagree. But what I want to finish saying is any merit that I get for extending the olive branch, whether that's friendship, forgiveness, or peace, I don't think about the other person's intention. Oh, I wonder what he really wants from me. That's just like what it really a wants. bum coming up to me for a dollar and me saying, are you going to go buy a beer with this? Just give him the dollar and whatever he decides to do with it is his business. Gotcha. You get a merit for giving him the dollar. He gets the demerit for buying a beer. So if someone comes to me and says, hey, I want you forgive me. I want peace. I want us to be friends. Can we do that? And that's all positive. And I'm in a positive place. In most cases, I'm going to say, cool, mm -hmm. we can now. <clears throat> In my mind, I could probably keep them at a healthy distance, but I'm not going to tank. But you shouldn't have to do that. But I'm not going to tank what I just said with, mm -hmm. I think I, I can give you peace. I can forgive you, but I don't think we should be friends. But you I don't to, think those two things actually go together. But you want to keep them at a healthy distance. Why? But a if you're, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because if but a healthy distance uh -huh. would be protecting me from. That's right. So what's the difference between protecting you from some bad shit yesteryear versus now? Because there ain't no difference. Me protecting myself now saying we ain't going to be friends is no different than we becoming friends in this yesteryear. And I, and I see some of them same bad habits. And I, now I got to still say, you know what? We can't be friends. Ain't no fucking difference. Whether it's a year from now or I tell you right now, there is no difference. You're still trying to protect yourself from that bad energy that this person all obviously possesses. Now, I got what you're saying. You're like, hey, yeah, I'm the type of person that can give a person a shot till they fuck up. Everybody ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? To me, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, come on, bro. Like, we already know what it is. And I'm not finna let no killer back in my house. I ain't finna let no thief back in my house. If that's what you proved to be, sorry, you gotta wear that letter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just is what it is. I'm not gonna forget that. You know what I'm saying? I can forgive. You know what I'm saying? Let God forgive. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna forget. And that's just what I'm saying. You, know, I can do that with no problem. But I also feel that people get criticized a lot from trying to protect your own peace and your own innocence a lot of times because you need that sometimes. You really do. Every time you encounter with someone that does something bad to you, because you say this to me, it takes a piece of you. It's just like a fighter. If a fighter fights almost to the death, a piece of him, he leaves in that ring. He's not the same. I don't care what you think. He's given everything he have. And if you're in a relationship, a lot of times, relationships are like fights. And you leave a piece of you in that goddamn arena. So when you come out, your job is really to protect what you have left. Sometimes you might not have enough to keep giving, especially giving to somebody that's not worth it. You give, you're trying to give your friendship to somebody when you could possibly be in a relationship building a friendship or restoring yourself. And I agree 100%. I do. I think for me, any type of negativity, whether it's from an ex, I think any type of negative for me is almost unbearable. Even when I'm like in a, in a active fight for somebody, with somebody, it takes a whole lot out of me. I just don't like it. Physically, I, I'm, I get ill. And then I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you said that you befriended one of your ex. I did. He didn't try to fuck again <clears throat> until a year later, you said? I would say probably a year, maybe. Maybe even longer. Okay. How did that conversation go when he tried to fuck? Well, I'm only saying trying to fuck because I can read between the lines. Like, can you meet? I'm going to be in Orlando. Can you meet me <laughs> here? You know, can we meet? Uh, so he didn't say, like, I miss that pussy. He didn't say anything you. like that. I got you. I but got he you. was trying to get me alone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So did you address that though? Did you be like, you know, would, would, would you know, your wife gonna be there? What would your wife think about this? No. Is that? I didn't and see, and this, and this is the type of things that I'm talking about. 
You know what I'm saying? So why are you steady trying to protect some friendship that you shouldn't be protecting? Now you also becoming part of the crime. Because now, if the wife was the... Let's just say, for instance, the wife see that text message. Well, she has the right to be mad at both of y'all ass. You know what I'm saying? She has the right to curse you out and curse him out too. Because her fruition of what she thinking, even though it might be him... Also proves that, well, she only want to still be friends with you because, you know, she want a window of opportunity herself. That might not be your agenda, but it looks like that. And instead of con causing that confusion, I'm just saying close the book on that chapter. Well, I on. think after I didn't acquiesce to what he was trying to do and after I got into a brand new relationship, we still had a friendship. After I didn't fuck, didn't meet him, we still continued to have a dialogue, I mean a dialogue, and he didn't try again, so maybe the letdown was enough. And when I got into a new relationship, he invited me and my person to film an event. So it's hard for me to say that this person is just a slime ball because it seems like okay, I tried, she didn't, she didn't, it, I threw out my bait, she didn't bite the bait. She's clearly in another relationship now. So is my professional relationship and friendship with her more important than the sex i think that's someone that said oh, well i can't fuck her clearly and she's in another relationship and she's happy let's still keep getting this money mm -hmm. it's hard for me to look at that and say i can't do it mm -hmm. and the only reason why we didn't go is because my spouse put his foot down and said uh, -uh don't want to do it we had to travel for it it didn't mm -hmm. seem worth it to him so we just didn't go. But if it were up to smarter, me, we would have gone. The smarter brains prevail. I got what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? The smart, and, and that's what I'm saying. Typically, more smart people prevail versus gullible. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, you don't leave gullible people to make decisions. That's just sometimes the outcome be all bad. And then I'm just going to go, you know, out on a limb. It's just the way I, the reason I'm going to disagree with you because we've been doing this show for a long time and you seem like you always pick slime balls. So I would go by your track record and say you was wrong again. And I'm going to definitely say you was wrong because at the end of the day, I've said this on this show numerous of times. Men will wait to the end of time. <laughs> you just need a vulnerable moment. Anybody with some common sense, especially a man, will know this. It's a vulnerable moment. Some people know that when a woman's not at a vulnerable state, you can't strike right then and there. I've been that person. You know what I'm saying? You really can't strike. But when women are at their most vulnerable, that pussy come a, come a calling. You know what I'm saying? They don't call the way it is. You know, they do it the same way he did. You know, say, hey, you, you know, you, think you can meet me alone, this and that. That pussy come a-calling when they having problems and that. You know, become the shoulder and the dick they can lean on. All that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So we get it. But in her mind, she never think like, I wasn't waiting. I had one chick ask me that. One chick after we finished fucking. She was like, how long have you been waiting to do that? Honestly, since we met. That was my honest answer, though. She couldn't believe it. She gonna believe it. we had been friends like mm, five years. That you know is what I'm saying? Crazy. And, 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 but and, how are women supposed to? This is the thing. Like you expect us to be like telepathic or some shit. No, I don't. Just want some pussy. No, I don't. Like that. Way, I don't think that way. No, if you're I don't. being kind to me, I think I'm being somebody's being kind to me because I'm being kind to them. Gotcha. There's nothing in me in that moment where I'm being kind to someone and they're being mm. kind to me that I'm like, hmm, mm. wonder what this person really wants. You, I just don't think that way. You've been a server, right? Absolutely. Right. You ever notice, and I know this has happened to you since you've been a server, okay? You ever notice that as a server, you could be serving. Mm -hmm. With women, you could be nicer. Thank you, ma'am, this and that. Then you serve a guy, and behind that guy always comes, you single, what's up, this, this, and that. So you being nice, but being nice to a guy, we interpret it different ways. You know why? Because sex is always on the brain. Rihanna done told you this. Okay, you but that's a saying? man, though. Got so you, you can't expect a woman to I, 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 do that. I, 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 I. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you said, do you expect us to be telepathic? No. What I do expect you to, to do, because I teach my daughter this. What I do expect you to do, and I've made this statement plenty of times on the show. And I'm going to say this again for those who are now tuning in and don't know. Is a woman... You walk her down, you're walking around with a million dollars. It's called your pussy. You should assume that everyone's trying to get it. You understand what I'm saying? Like when someone, like we talk about these rappers day in and day out, and not, not too long ago, P, um, PMB Rock, you know what I'm saying, just got murdered. But what did they say? 
damn man, he was in the, in the he hood? was in the middle of the hood. You know what I'm saying? In a Maserati with chains on this and that. They like, man, I don't know you. I mean, it's like dangling shit in front of a wolf, and everybody comprehends that. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying to women is, I'm not saying every party person is out to rob them because everybody wasn't out to rob PMB Rock. But you got to know someone is. And that's what I'm saying. For you to go into this shit like, la, 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 la. Like, that's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? And that's how y'all approach situations. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But every time, Kana, every time, come on, man. It got to be some time that you like, this motherfucker wants some pussy. And y'all only notice it from the ones that, that blatantly say they want some pussy. Yeah. But then y'all be like, I got got. Y'all start sounding like the motherfuckers on Entourage with Pauly Shore and shit. I got got. You know what I'm saying? Writings be right there on the wall like you. You know, well, I mean, he said that he was sorry and he had a family. What did I say? But when this show just started, they start saying shit like, well, he's married and I don't yeah. understand it. And I got got. But you know why that <laughs> makes sense to you is because it makes sense to me because I take marriage seriously. You can only... Judge a person really based on you your take own vows gotcha. and morals. Gotcha. You take marriage seriously, right? Yeah. Do you think men cheat in marriages? Yes. There you go. And that's all you need to know. So that shit that you're saying is non and void. You know what I'm saying? I take marriage seriously. That has nothing to do but, with the so, man. But when he said, I'm married, to me, well, he had already knew he was he married. Saw you, yeah, he saw you I, got married. He knew he fucked over right, you. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. This is a bad example. I wouldn't go down this road. No, but <laughs> no, I'm saying that. Being that we were able to talk about his wife and what she does for work and where they live now. It was already on the table. There was a lot of history there that we talked about. That's right. That, but that was and already that on the table. And it made me comfortable. And that's that's normally what get people got. You disarm them first. You know what I'm saying? This is the crazy shit that I just don't understand about women. It's like women don't believe that men know how to disarm them and then take shit from them. Like, this shit happens day in and day out basis. I can line a bunch of women up, and then you have a bunch of angry bitches talking about, <laughs> he took my car. He took me for money. I had to pay for his video shoots. I paid for his daycare. It's like, a, he took my, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd be like, this shit just didn't come out of nowhere. Like, these signs was already in the making. And those signs was already in the making. You can do whatever you want. All I'm saying is, women... You walking around with a million dollars. It's called pussy. Every man trying to get it. You know what I'm saying? Not every man going to get it. But every man trying to get it. I feel like you skipped over something important that I said, though. I didn't. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I didn't. We didn't even address it. That you may have unresolved feelings and issues with an ex. Mm -hmm. And to me, your current woman sees that as a red flag. If I can't be in the same room as her, what's up with y'all? Like, I, I even with baby mama, baby daddy situations, when I first get in a relationship with someone who has a baby mama, I start looking for shit like that. Like, y'all always arguing. You you going off on us. She going off on you. That means y'all been fucking. See, and the dick stop. And she got an attitude. Like, that's the time. When shit is negative between two people, that's when, to me, it's like something else is going on. Y'all just ain't mad at each other because y'all broke up fucking six years ago. You still mad? Something ain't right with that. So for me, when you say, you when you cussing out your ex and you have so much bad things to say, y'all can't be friends, what's really going on? <clears throat> and and might nothing nothing might be going on, but mm -hmm. this is where I go in protection mode when I see shit like that because that's negative. So I'm like, okay. This relationship been over for a while. What's really eating Gilbert Grape right now? Why are you really, really mad? Now, you might be able to tell me and it makes sense, but it's still a red flag for me. Mm -hmm. Especially baby mama, baby daddies. Why can't y'all two get along? You had a baby. It's over. Mm -hmm. The relationship is over. You fucking somebody. She fucking somebody. What y'all so mad about? Mm -hmm. You got kids? <laughs> no. That's why you guys don't understand. You know what I'm saying? We'll go on the next chapter if you really want to. It's amazing to me that you can pick apart that shit, but you can't pick apart this man in front of you that's married and trying to fuck you. You know what I'm saying? This is the goddamn issue right here. You talking about this shit right here and Gilbert eating grapes. You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit ain't got but nothing. But acknowledge that, though. <laughs> I don't. I think okay, first of all, let me let me explain something to you. First, I don't have to acknowledge that because I said in the beginning that every situation is different. And secondly... I definitely disagree with you because I have an ex that I don't talk to this day. 
I don't desire to talk to him. I don't want to be in the same room with him. And this shit been been almost like seven, eight years ago. And I still don't want to be around him. It, and we ain't fucking, never fucked. We hadn't fucked since we broke up. You're wrong. You know what I'm saying? I just don't like her energy. I don't like what she did in the relationship, and I just don't want want but no parts of it. But who said she's the same person today? I what if she went and became a she's, nun? That's and cool. Is giving money away and, and, and helping heal the world, and she gotcha. really just needs to talk to you now, that ain't to got say to, I'm sorry. That ain't got nothing to do with. That had nothing to do with me, and she <laughs> did say I'm sorry, and I said cool, and she said, "Can we be friends?" And I said, "No." You know what I'm saying? There was nothing else to. You know what I'm saying? There so she didn't. She 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 didn't. When she hung up the phone with you, trust me, her sorry went. She doesn't think you accepted her apology. Then that's her fault. Then if, you're, if you cannot accept Mm-mm. someone's, if you cannot accept someone saying that they forgive, then that's an issue with you, and that's what I'm talking about. It's not an issue with me. That's an issue with you. I don't have anything to do about that. I didn't say fuck her. I didn't sound angry. I didn't talk to her angry. I talked to her just as calm as I'm talking right now. I'm like, hey, I totally understand. I get it. You know, sometimes things just don't work out. And I'm right. Sometimes shit just don't work out. You know, you said that we'd be friends afterwards. We said a lot of things in the relationship that wasn't upheld. And that's why I left it. So you made an agreement with her to be friends after the relationship ended. And I know this was said when it wasn't Mad Day. The relationship was good. You're like, sure, we could be friends. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you get out of the relationship, bad breakup. She asks, she says sorry. You give her the forgiveness, but say we can't be friends. And then you said you broke your covenant, so it's okay for me to break mine. No, that's really what you did, because no. she didn't uh, uphold her part of the deal mm-hmm. in the relationship. Mm-hmm. You are now saying I know I said that, but since you fucked up, I'm allowed to fuck up too. That's what you just did by no. saying that. I didn't say I'm allowed to fuck up because I'm not fucking up. I'm being true to myself. And that's where you're missing the whole thing. I'm true to myself. I don't let nobody, whether someone stole from me. The one thing I do know, and everybody should know this about me. One thing I don't play around with is my motherfucking money and my motherfucking business in me. Those three I don't mess around with. My mama. You know what I'm saying? And you can't do anything to any one of those. So that's your bad. It don't got nothing to do with me because you decided to fuck up. I'm not fucking up anything. Well, no, because I said you gave still, your word I'm and you went against your word because no, someone else went I against theirs get, is what I'm saying. I didn't give no word. We was having, I didn't I didn't say I promised. I didn't say anything. I said, I could see that. I could probably see that. But she also was talking about friendship. When we was talking about that, she was also talking about, well, we could be friends and we could probably still fuck from time to time and all this other type shit. Those things are like friends with benefits and mm-hmm. I feel like that's what a lot of people are going after. Yeah. They're not going off friendship. after genuine friendship. They're going after friends with benefits, benefits like, hey, I fucked up and I know I fucked up, but hey, we can still fuck once in a while, right? Come on, man. And she just disguised that real statement with some friendship shit and I can understand that. I can definitely understand that. I mean, I understood who she was as a person. So I know it that wasn't coming with, let's just be friends. Mm-hmm. We didn't have nothing beneficial to be friends about. You understand what I'm saying? We didn't. You know what I'm saying? I know, as well as she know, like, she was going to say, hey, you know, I don't know, man. I'm horny. You know what I'm saying? You ain't seeing nobody. I ain't seeing nobody. So let's just fuck. And before you know it, you in this badass cycle. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying to avoid all that. Sometimes people need to know how to make a clean break. That's what's wrong with with a lot of individuals. They don't know how to cut the rope. Yeah. I would say that making a clean break for me is, it makes sense. And I've made clear breaks, but I feel like does that negate the future if that person comes back around and is a changed person and wants... um, Why does that have anything to do with you? If they're a changed person, that doesn't have anything to do with you. So basically, you want to take them back? I don't want to take them back. No, I wouldn't take them back. I wasn't saying that. But if I'm really saying I forgive you, and I'm really mean that in my heart, then if you ask me to go out for a drink tomorrow, I'm not going to be like, hell no. I might not go because I have to work or several other reasons or my man doesn't like it. But I'm not saying no because of the breakup. If I forgive you, I forgive you. It's all water under the bridge. I'm not going to keep... 
saying to myself, this person really, really hurt me. He asked for forgiveness. I gave it to him. So if I see him out and he wants to buy me a drink, there should be no problem if I really forgave. Mm -hmm. You can forgive, but, but, but you if not, forgiving is really forgiving. But why can't, but, but what does forgiving have to do about still being friends? That has nothing to do with uh, you forgiving someone. Those two don't go together. You not wanting to be a friend has nothing to do with you not forgiving someone. But I don't know how to say I forgive you, there but you we go. don't know you how to You don't know how. There you go. And that's I don't issue. know. I don't feel like the statement goes together. Therapy. I might feel Therapy. like my forgiveness hasn't been delivered Therapy. if I'm saying I forgive you, but. There you go. Therapy. You understand? I do. Therapy. I'm telling you. I tell you I understand. Therapy. Something's wrong with you. Because those two don't go together. You can forgive somebody. And decide to move on with your life. And if they respect that and really want the best for you, then they should respect that. Okay. You heard it here. Therapy. <laughs> Let's move to the second topic. And the second topic is going to be, does too many partners keep you from making a connection and falling in love? I think this is an awesome topic, especially coming off the heels of our last conversation about being sexually liberated, which women are going through right now. It's very, very current. It's trendy. Women are sexually liberated. So they feel like, hey, you got 20 partners. I got 30. What's the big deal? Um, so if we're going there and the question is, does that liberation, do those 30 partners make it hard for you to connect and fall in love? I say yes. Um, because I think somewhere in the sleeping around, in the several partners, I think there's a little bit of numbness, I think, that happens. I think you get used to bodies. I think you get used to it. I think you get addicted to the feeling of it. And you're chasing it just like any other addict. I think that it does more harm than good. Um, and we're going to focus, focus on the harm of not being able to connect some, with somebody and fall in love. I think that a sexually liberated person may have fucked their husband 15 niggas ago. She didn't know it because the lack of connection and love from sleeping around. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard for me to have the conversation because <clears throat> right now that's the agenda is sexually liberated women that should not be judged. And I'm not judging you. I'm just saying that after a while, you become numb to stuff. If you're somebody that eats candy and you only gained five or 10 pounds, it's not a big deal. But if you keep doing that over several years, you're going to be 400 pounds. And you look back, is that harmful? Yeah. And you became numb to the scale. You became numb to all the bad things that were happening because you were enjoying the taste so much that everything else numbed out. You just don't feel it. You don't care about it. And I think the same thing is happening when you're just collecting bodies over and over again, just sleeping with two or three men a year. To be honest with you, like having this conversation is kind of uncomfortable for me because I've never done it. Now, I don't have just one sexual partner either. I ain't no fucking virgin. But I only slept with people I was interested in. No, they were not all my boyfriend. But I had some type of feeling for them. They could have been my boyfriend. Most likely, they just didn't want to. If they were available to be my boyfriend, they would have been my boyfriend or they wasn't fucking. So for me, it's actually an uncomfortable space with all the sexual liberation talk and non-judgment. And you can sleep with however men you want to. It's very uncomfortable for me because I don't believe in that. Gotcha. I ain't finna be politically correct. You know what I'm saying? This sex sexual liberation shit is some bullshit for bitches to be hoes. And I'm gonna call it like what it is. You know what I'm saying? And... I understand. You know what's so crazy? Why you was talking? You was like, I ain't finna be. I ain't finna do no judgment. You know what? I I just don't want to be a hypocrite because we judge every day. We judge music. We judge movies. We, we judge. So to me, to sit there and say you can't judge a human being, I mean, that is being hypocritical. We judge human beings every day. We were just on this show not too long ago when you was giving a tap in talking about Blueface and Krishan or Sheen or whatever the fuck her name is. You know what I'm saying? But that is judgment. You know what I'm saying? Do you think we should call the cops? And I don't think she know any better. I think that's judgment. You understand what I'm saying? You're undermining what you think is right for her. And that's what we do in this Western civilization. We judge and try to make a judgment call what's right for somebody else. I'm not saying right or wrong. Now, if you fit, say you want to disguise it and say, you know what? I get that. Now, I get this part. I don't want to call myself a hoe. I get that. So you switch it and say, 
I'm sexually free. I'm sexually liberated. I understand that. You just you don't like the term hoe. You don't want to be put in a box and say, you know, this and that. Now, statistics show, you know what I'm saying? And look this up because I don't want to give the percentage. But statistics show that with women, women who often is connected with their heart, when they have a lot of sexual partners, they also have a high divorce rate. And reason being is because they are un un unable to connect to their partner. They'll be bored. They will start judging that person. You know why? Because they have all this sexual experience of all this, this whole thon that they went through. You know what I'm saying? With other people. And now they... Seriously. Because even when I talk to the women, you know what I'm saying? Sexually liberated. Okay. Um, <laughs> women start asking you shit. That there's like left field shit, you know what I'm saying? You ever tried anal? Like we skip like way past head, all <laughs> kind of shit. You like, damn, that's where we at. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and this is, you know what I'm saying? Because, and then you like, where do you get this from? Like in your mind, it's a guy. Because every guy will say this. Women, if y'all don't know, we all, when y'all start suggesting shit, we like, who in the fuck did you try this with? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes that route, it's like, you know what I'm saying? You ever try it? Why? I mean, do you like it? I don't like it. <laughs> but why are we landing here? <laughs> and it always comes back to, well, me and this guy used to mess with back, you know what I'm saying? When I first started, you start giving these stories. I'm, okay, this is how we ended up at anal. You like anal because you was fucking some other guy and that's what y'all used to do. And you're trying to see if I want to fuck you in your ass. I get all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I totally get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, but this is where that liberation, quote unquote, gets you. Because they be so sexually um experimental mm -hmm. is that when they get to the guy that they want to settle down with that guy is probably nothing like right. the guys that you was fucking with mm -hmm. so now you now the woman start looking at the guy crazy this motherfucker can't fuck this motherfucker can't do shit you know what I'm saying? you just be angry but you really mad at yourself you know what i'm saying you mad at yourself because you want to get fucked you want to swing from the chandelier and you want to like have, to, I, I saw this shit not too long ago. Like women secretly download want two dicks at one time. It's like, this is part it's of that sexual true. liberation shit that we be talking about. Um, I think you're a hundred percent right. It's one of those things you have to tread a thin line. Yeah, I'd prefer not to. Because... It's hard to say with your head up that it's okay for a man, man to have 30 partners and not, not okay for a woman to have 30 partners We're not wired not be same. able to defend that. I believe that. But am I willing to defend that on a daily? No. I'm not. Because most mm. of my defense are going to come from I, I, I. I don't believe in that. My mm. morals. I and my don't work when you're talking about a whole population of women. Mm -hmm. um, especially women now who are fighting for our rights and things like that. It just mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense to have the conversation that it's okay for but one I'm not sex and not okay for the other one. Yeah, but I'm, That's why we're focusing on does on. it get in the way of connection but and love? But but this is why I'm but this is why you have to focus in on focus on it. Is because you're talking about two different types. You see how you just said that? You said that well I can't defend that type of behavior based upon the woman mm -hmm. but you can't speak for the man so you don't know nothing about being no man and i can tell you from from, from a man and being a man i can I, I and i've done it i fuck people i fuck women for almost five years with no feelings i didn't love them i, I love the sex i love that part but i didn't love her I even tried to wrap my mind around it. And I just didn't want to be with her. Sex was amazing. Head was amazing. Threesomes was amazing. All that type of shit was amazing. But I realized as a guy, I can fuck with no emotion. Emotion has nothing to do with my love for you. Question? One guy stands that during his 20s, he used to look at women as sparring partners. 
So, <laughs> thank you. Really found the right woman. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. And that's my point of what, what? I. That, that's my point of what I was saying. Like a lot of times with guys, <laughs> a sparring partner. Yeah, a lot of times. Okay, with, okay, I'm the same way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and the, and that's the thing that like when you were saying that you was like, well, we need to stay on topic. We are staying on topic. The reason I'm saying that is it is real possible for a guy to love someone, but he, like he just said, he has to meet the right one. But he's gonna love them just based on love, not sex. Mm -hmm. With women, y'all connect sex and love is Together. one, and that's why I'm saying that. The reason the connection isn't going well is because that's the way y'all do it. But you definitely, ha if you're going to have that conversation, you got to include men and start to recognize that y'all are not men and men are not y'all. You don't see men saying, walking to a club talking about, boy, look at all these bitches in here. All these relationships I can get into. I don't know no man that ever walked in no club, into a wedding, into any of that shit. It's something that happens when they meet the right person. But we don't walk in it like that way. But we do walk in the club talking about, boy, look at this bitch right here, boy. Boy, that mouth look like it could do some damage. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're visual creatures. I can't speak for women if women say that. Going to a smoke lounge and like, look at that print. You know what I'm saying? It looked like something I can work with right there. I don't know. You may have the answer to that. I mean, there are probably <laughs> some women that are like that, for sure. That's why we have the actual topic. Um, but I think that we're ignoring that most of these women I feel like are damaged. And I think if they are, if, if that's true, then they are getting the only thing that they feel like they could honestly get from a man. And that's sex. That's you right. just answered it for yourself. If that's the only <clears throat> thing they're providing, if I can't get you to feed me emotionally, I can't get you to feed me financially, mm -hmm. then if I in my mind am thinking the only thing I can get from men is sex, then that's all I'm going to be getting from their ass. And when one ain't available, there'll be someone else to call if that's all I'm looking for to it, to get. And I don't know a woman that just wakes up and is like, you know what? You just thought like a man. I did? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you was answering the questions. So. Yeah, I was finna jump in, but y'all was like, you know what? She's she making, she making, making a great point. Like, that's how we think. <laughs> and and for women not to understand that, I think that's a real, I think that's a real issue because if you don't really understand that part that men can wake up like that and just have that feeling of no attachment, no free, like just like, damn, you know, I just want to fuck something today. But I, I mean, think men are like that naturally. I don't think women are just born that way. We go first, start out looking for love mm -hmm. and romance and financial stability and being protected. We mm -hmm. start out wanting those things. Mm -hmm. Well, then the protection, protection we find out goes out the window. Financial st stability goes out the window. After all these things you hoped for are gone and the only thing that remains constant is a stiff dick, what do you expect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you look at the women a lot of times, it, I've, I've said this before, it's like y'all just like attention. And there's, it, and whether it's 18, 8, 80, cripple crazy, it doesn't really matter the woman. You know what I'm saying? And I had to figure this out. Even as a young lad, you know what I'm saying? I, say I used to say to myself, for real, I used to be fucking girls around my, around my age. And like most guys, we like, I want to fuck an older chick. You know what I'm saying? I set out on this mission to go fuck an older chick. I don't know why. Thinking it's going to be different. Fuck the older chick. You know what I said? Ain't no fucking difference. 880 cripple or crazy. It's all the same. It might be wetter. The experience might be a little different. You could probably do a little bit different things. She could probably take dick different. But she wasn't different because she was older. Just in my mind. Because I set out for that mission. You see what I'm saying? But I ain't set out on no mission like, oh, I'm looking for love. I didn't set out on this mission and was like, oh, this older chick that I get, you know, she got to be a cougar and bad. And you know what I'm saying? I'm going to settle down with that chick. Females, a lot of times, I feel like when y'all start fucking, y'all seek validation based in that because you want that attention and it's the bad attention to have. So the more bodies that you start to get, you become, you become jaded and desensitized. So now it's harder for you to love. And then when you get in front of the guy that you that you want to marry, whatever this and that, they are unhappy in that marriage. They start saying a whole bunch of shit. 
We had another question? Yep. All right. So, if a man is unattached, he's okay. But if a woman is unattached, she damaged. Um, yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I feel like you. I don't know you personally. So, I can't say that you're damaged. But if I have to answer it for a, a wide variety or most of the time, I would say, yeah, most of the time, women who are promiscuous are damaged or either uninformed um, undeveloped because I know what, we all have a that's promiscuous stage when we're young yeah. and, and that's, that's what what's I'm about called to say. being undeveloped in here yeah. I was about to say that I was about to say that I don't want to go out there and say the word damage you know what I'm saying because that's like putting somebody in a box when you don't know what re- really, really really what happened but I will say this is human beings there is a thing is being uneducated and uninformed so just like if someone don't know how to swim, someone push them in the water. Some people know how to kick, and, and 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 that has happened to me. Someone pushed me in the pool. I didn't know how to swim. I pushed up to the top, started kicking, got to. Then some people just drown. They brain don't connect to Something kicking happened. and paddling and shit. They just succumb to it and then That's they sick. drown. You see what I'm saying? So I don't want to use the word damage because I'll say that 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 woman could be uninformed of her. Knowing who she is as a person, knowing her value, knowing her worth. Value, so and worth. That's so, the word so, we need to focus so, on. So, so I would disagree with you, and I would say that I wouldn't call them damaged. You know what I'm saying? Because an uneducated person, a lot of time, can just be lost. Yes, I agree, and I like I like what you use though. I like value and worth. Because there's no way, as a woman... You said it was damaged. <laughs> okay, but I, I'm giving old to what you said. If we don't want to use the word damage, let's focus on more positive words. If you knew your value and you knew your worth, then there's no way you would be passing yourself around. No one does that. No one does... No, Tiffany does not say, let's go be in mm. the Brandon Mall. You can't find Tiffany's jewelry in every mall. They are the elite so you have to go to New York. You have to go to high-end places to get high-end things. So if you are comparing yourself to having that type of value, then how is it okay to pass yourself around? Make that make sense. I'll take back the word damage. Absolutely. But being unattached and sleeping around says that you do not value yourself. Yes, it says you're equal with men all day. Congratulations to you. But when you find a man that you do love, where has your value at at that point? Where has it gone at that point? If you got all them bodies and all that sexual experience, you don't grip no more. Where's the value in that? I heard a woman not too long ago say that's not true. She was like, I still grip. I had three she babies grown. and the whole nine. And she said she had a high body count. She felt like a lot of that shit is bullshit. You know, and I hear a lot, and I hear a lot of, I hear a lot of women that say that. Now I'm the one. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not in no no position to discredit a woman or based upon how they feel. But I will say this: this is why I said that a lot of times, and it's hard to do this, but I've said that women need to be judged based upon sexual performance and things like that. The way they judge men. Women have open conversations about men like, oh, yeah, he's small. He come oh, yeah, fast. You know what I'm saying? He come fast. Oh, he has a big dick, but girl, he don't know what he's doing with that shit. You know, the whole nine. But you don't really see a lot of those conversations that go along with women. But the reason behind that is because sometimes with men, there's not really a bunch of sexual experienced men at an abundance rate that know what bad pussy is, good pussy is, loose pussy is, this and that. So once they hop in pussy, they just happy to be there and then they tell the women, hey, this pussy good and that's what they ride with. Yeah. I would say this too. Um, how do you expect to look or be of value to your king when all the men in the kingdom already been with you. You see, a lot of us don't move away from home. We live in our hometown that we were born in, went to high school in, you get married and you go to the club and every nigga in there done hit. Where's the liberation in that? It At some point, you're going to run into a brick wall, either looking at yourself as a lower value or your spouse looking at you like, I don't, I, I want to go to the town fair. But every two steps we take, it's a nigga that done smashed. 
Think about that and what it does to your value before we go on this crazy long journey conversations and fights over women being sexually liberated and because a man can, you can. His value does not decrease. Sorry. Most men don't get broken up with when they got a hundred women that they done been with. But women that got a hundred men and they man know that? Show me that woman and her man who still sees value in her. Even if he tells her, yes, I see value in you. How must it feel to be in the same room with two or three people that already been with his wife? Ask him that. I ain't no woman. You have to ask, you have to tap in. Come in. Write, tap write, in. And write that Speaking in. Speaking of tap ins, <laughs> we have one for you today. And again, I'm going to take it awful social. We don't do this all the time because we like your personal tap ins. But sometimes there are stuff that is so riveting on the Internet. And this one thing I saw is a look like a boyfriend and girlfriend who live together. We're in the store and the guy happened to be on FaceTime with his baby mama. And when he got off the phone, he noticed that his girlfriend had attitude and he asked her, what's wrong with you? And the first thing she said was, first of all, you've been on the phone with your baby. You've been FaceTiming your baby mama and I'm standing right here. And he says to her, well, wait a minute. I'm not just talking to her. I'm showing her a pair of shoes that I'm about to buy for my son. Well, I got a problem with that, too, because you pay $1,100 in child support. Why are we buying your son's shoes? And if we're going to buy him shoes, are we going to buy me some shoes and my daughter some shoes? Now, I was really pissed off at her, but even more pissed off that he didn't defend himself better because she told the clerk to put the shoes back. He said, no, don't put them back. Let's buy them. And then I'll take you upstairs and buy you a pair of shoes and your daughter a pair of shoes. To me, she would have been left right there in the goddamn store. Mm -hmm. To me. But it still made me want to pose the question to everybody as to, is it a priority mm -hmm. for you to go over to your girlfriend and say, hey, I want to buy my, my boy a pair of shoes. I'm going to FaceTime his mama. Mm -hmm. Make sure to use the right size and the right color for his little outfit. Mm -hmm. Is that okay with you? Is it that important? Like, was she wrong or right in that argument? Typically, I would say that she was wrong. Um, if I was given that, if I was given that answer, but I, would, from listening to you talk, I'm gonna say she wasn't wrong, and I'm gonna tell you why though. She wasn't wrong because to me it sounded like she wore the pants in that relationship, and whoever the leader is, I mean, that's that's the rule of thumb. Now, if you ask me, my general. Uh, thought process about what you're saying i'll say whatever the fuck you is you signed up for i would have silenced that bitch in fucking one second you know what i'm saying because that's what you signed up for it, it, it it's it's you already knew i had a baby mama uh what i pay in child support if you ain't paying it then you don't got shit to say to me you know what i'm saying if i'm paying the bills and this and that shut the fuck up strap yourself in and let's grind or you can go somewhere else but to certain individuals it sound like she wore the pants and a lot of times in these relationships you having men not really being men it really ain't none of her business you know what i'm it saying it really isn't but she made about uh, the only valid point she made was i'm working overtime right now so i i know how that feels to work over the 40 hours and you're tired gotcha. and half of your the man's check is eleven hundred dollars is a lot of money what did i say that from goes beginning? out the window but what did i say from the beginning that is what you signed up for this didn't just start. That's why I'm saying you're wrong. When you sign up, and, I, and the, the shit that's crazy is like, you know, people don't understand this until really they get married because that's when it come into play. When all y'all money become one and then you see what part is leaving. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now you get to see that, you know, I signed up for this, this situation. And this is for men too. When you sign, when men sign up for relationships with women and they have kids and then they, and they mama start doing for them and you not the biological father, that's why the man is mute. Man, she give this, man, she giving this motherfucker $300 a week. He ain't got shit to say. You know why? Because that's her child. But guess who's at fault? You. You signed up for that. You already knew she had a child. Well, her child ain't going to go nowhere till he die. You understand what I'm saying? It's what you signed up for. It ain't no different than her. That's what you signed up for. You, you working all this overtime? I tell people that the same shit every time because I hear this every day. I get emails about this every day. 
oh, you know, my man was a felon and he can't get a job. That's what you signed up for. He ain't just become a felon. He was a felon. He was paying child support. He didn't just start paying child support. And even if he did, you know he had a child and the possibility of child support coming is down the line. When you meet most men and y'all start talking and they start saying shit about their baby mama and how they don't get along, child support is like winter. It's coming. You know what I'm saying? You can almost <laughs> bank on that. You know what I'm saying? You can almost bank on it. So what's the complaint about? Work your overtime, support both of y'all, stay in a relationship, let him continue to pay and do all his shit. Obviously, if you really wanted to make the shit go smoothly, then you will become friends with the baby mama if that's a possibility. But if it ain't, then you got to deal with that angry shit the same way he got to deal with it. And he's trying to smooth it over because he don't want to go back to court because they ain't calling her ass in the court. They're going to call him. And if they ain't going to put her ass in jail, they're going to pull his ass in jail. So to me, you can shut the fuck up and get the moving. You heard it here. Let me tell you something else you can bank on. You can bank on another episode of Relations. This is the end of the show, guys. My name is Kana Lassiter, and you can find me on IG and Twitter at Kana Lassiter. Hey, you can find your boy on both platforms at 51 Space on Twitter and IG. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and for asking questions and, and joining us on TikTok. Hey, y'all subscribe to the channel on YouTube. We come out on Sundays now. You want to go ahead and click and like and follow. Subscribe to that channel that way you get a notification that way when the show come on boom you in the mix you looking for these shirts you can get those at alpha male god creations on ig dm me we got some new shirts coming we're gonna be doing some giveaways so again i'm gonna sign us out like i always do you know what the time it is Peace.